to this additive pass tutorial in this video we will look at the design and simulation of differential amplifier with active load or current mirror load now it's also called unbalanced differential amplifier since we have the differential input and single ended output moreover the main reason why it's called unbalanced is because the node p is not really an ac ground which is in the case of fully differential amplifier the reason why it happens is because only one of the load is diode connected and hence there is a variation in changes in the voltage levels of the node vx and vy anyway we'll not go too deep into the theory part of it let's go and see the design and simulation of this differential amplifier with active load in LT spice okay now first of all i want you to look at this circuit because uh, we are going to use these names in the design and calculation so this is m2 and this is m3 remember that this is the second mosfet and this is the third mosfet that we are using this is because the gain of the amplifier the differential amplifier depends on the output resistance which are channel resistance of nmos and pmos this nmos and this pmos which is ro2 and ro3 so let's go to the design and see so the gain of this differential amplifier is gm times ro2 parallel with ro3 note that there is no negative sign here this is a positive one let's design an amplifier for the gain of 250 so we have the gain is equal to the gm times ro2 parallel ro3 which is square root of 2 id mu and cx w by l times ro2 2 parallel ro3 now to calculate ro2 and ro3 we have these equations and uh, these these are the values that i'm going to use in level 1 mosfet model of the in lt spice and id uh, let's let's i let id be 100 microamperes and then uh, with these values i'm going to have ro2 as 200 uh, kilo ohms and ro3 as 400 kilo ohm now we also have these parameters which we can use uh, and substitute in the previous equation gain equation that i have told and get the value of w by l which is the aspect ratio and we are going to get it as 175.79 use accurate for value for better results but i'm going to use 176 which you are going to see in the spice and now we also have the equation vgs is equal to the square root of 2 id by mu and cx w by l plus vth so substituting all these values we just now we got the w by l value and substitute this and vth we know as 0.4 we're going to get the vgs as 0.45333 volts this value also should be very accurate for uh, getting the particular gain okay let's go and see in lt spice if this works okay here we are in lt spice let's quickly check the values of the aspect ratios and let's go on okay one micro and 176 micro that was 175 aspect ratio w by l and here also it should be same remember that the gms of these mosfets should be same and uh, which means the W by L ratios should be same and at the same time the W by L ratios of these MOSFETs should be same this is how we got the equation of the gain if you don't follow the this that means uh, if you don't have the same aspect ratios for these two and these two uh, you're not going to get the gain equation that we are getting so it's must that i am using the same values for both of them so let's run this transit transient analysis and see the output yeah this is the output and let me click on input as well remember the input is a differential input so i should take the difference between the plus terminal and the minus terminal so i'm gonna click on this input as well since it is vn005 i'm gonna move it to one more plot plane i'm gonna click and add a new plot plane and move this n005 over here and uh, then subtract v of n005 from that and i'm gonna delete this this is no longer required so the input peak to peak value is 4 millivolts as you can see 2 plus, minus 2 and the output peak to peak value let's see what it is by using cursor it says 1.00094 if you divide let's neglect that 00094 if it is 1 divided by 4 millivolts which is going to give us a 250 volt per volt gain that's the gain that we expected one more thing i wanted to tell you is that even though this circuit is not fully differential amplifier because the output is not a differential signal the output is a single ended signal it's possible to have the gain of fully differential amplifier and this is 
possible only because of this current mirror if we don't have this current mirror we would have got half the gain of fully differential amplifier so that's it for now i'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching bye bye